There is a fantastic shot of the island of Mallorca and the town of Porto Cristo, which has turned out in big numbers. It's been really the first day that it hasn't been raining uh, across the course of the week. So it's been frustrating in some ways for the athletes, but they've had plenty of great facilities at the Rafa Nadal Academy. Here is the start list for the women's triple mix. And the top three, three Americans, Katie Zafira, Summer Cook, Kirsten, Casper, watch out for all of them. Jody Stimson and Rachel Klammer are your top five and they will be the contenders. And we've got class all the way through the field. Taylor Spivey will wear the blue swimmer's jersey by virtue of having the quickest swim time in Malta. So in the water, she is very, very hard to beat. But there is class all the way through this field. The championship points as they stand. 25 total championship points on the line. And if Katie Zafiris can take those 25, she will be just about impossible to beat as we head into Singapore. Kirsten Casper on 36, Summer Cook on 26. And there's class, as I say, all the way through the field. Vicky Holland joins me in commentary alongside Chris McCormack. And before we get to you guys, here is the colour jerseys you'll see out there. The run leader was the fastest run split from Malta, wearing the red, the bike leader in the green. The current overall leader, Katie Zafiris, has been wearing pink all the way through Super League Triathlon, and the blue is our fastest swimmer. So that's what those mean. You'll see athletes in white jerseys as well. That means there are young athletes under the age of 21. Just a reminder of the triple mix. We start with a traditional swim, bike, and run. One lap out in the swim, four laps on the bike, two on the run. As soon as the stage winner crosses the line, the 10-minute clock starts ticking, and the athletes have to get their heart rates under control, set up their gear once again, and go again in a different order. Bike, swim, run and the third stage as well. What we haven't just touched on is the third stage will be a pursuit start based on the amount of time lost in stage one and two to the leaders. So every single leg counts. It's not just a bit of a swim and run and bike around for fir the first two stages. Every second you lose will be paid for in stage three, and we are about to get underway on a very unique beach start. There's a little sandbar about 10 metres out as well, which provides another little wrinkle to this one. And here we go, getting underway in the women's triple mix. And we are Desiree Reidner in the white, closest to you. They swim out to the opening boy. And we think based on currents that the far right could be the best spot. But it's very changeable here in the cove at Porto Cristo. And we're lucky with the uh, amount of how flat the water is because a couple of days ago it was like a raging torrent out there. Such has been the weather that we have had. But lovely drone shots. And we can see in the red there on the... On the left, I think that is Kirsten Casper in the red, who's second overall. So she's had a great start. Yeah, so Kirsten, renowned actually as a really good all-round athlete. She's not just a one-trick pony, but she's swapped her green jersey that she had in Malta for the red jersey here. But she had a really good start there and is uh, right up there with the three leaders. Yes, she is. As they get through the first 100 metres to the boy, positioning very, very important. Dan Daniela Di Francesco was first around the can. She had it at the early inside run. But Kirsten Casper's been swimming really, really well. I spoke to Jonathan Hall, her coach, and uh, she's really teed up for this event. She said she really has to make a move in this early swim to try and alienate um, Katie Zafaris because they, they really see this course as one that Katie may struggle on. Yeah, I spoke to Jono earlier today as well, and he was saying that he'd made a really big effort to make sure his athletes didn't do too much in the week between Malta and Mallorca. It's really tempting to finish one race, travel to a new location, get going again, get, get into some training, but you've not really got time with these races. It takes a lot out of you as well, this short track racing. You've not got the time to put in some big training sessions, and his, his main philosophy for this week has been rest, recover. It's going to be a tough course in Mallorca, and that's, that was the attitude he's been giving to his athletes this week. They've rounded the second boy and they head back onto the beach for the first time. But the swim, of course, is not over. They'll make a run along the beach and then back into the water and around the third boy before they head home eventually. And we can already see quite a big split across the field as they deal with the differing conditions here uh, in the bay. And that kind of current swimming is, is certainly something that if you have experience in, you can do well and it can spread a field out. And Emma Jeffcoat, who's on the front, has that experience. She's a surf swimmer from Australia. She, uh, she was really, really excited this morning looking at the course. She, she saw the shifting, uh, shifting water and said, this is really going to suit me. Yeah, both Emma and Danielle, fantastic open water swimmers. Obviously, Danielle has that background in open water swimming anyway. She was a triathlete at age 12 and then went off into open water swimming for a while. But you can see both her and Emma coming out together at the front there. 
just stringing out the field a little bit. Yeah, two Australian flags there. Jeff Coat uh, at the front. Desiree Ridener had a really, really good swim there as well. And there's Kirsten Casper. And in the blue is Taylor Spivey as they spread out and decide what the best way uh, to the next turn boy is. They can make that decision. But great, great shots here from the beach at Porto Cristo and great conditions as well for racing. The weather has held off. And you can see already that athletes behind maybe they're 20 30 seconds behind already don't forget that the 90 second rule is uh, does apply as it does across all racing here at super league triathlon if they head into transition more than 90 seconds behind that is their day done yeah, the canadian des riders had a fantastic swim she had that slot number one on the swim start she had katie zaferis on her inside it looks like she was able to ride the wake all the way out to the first game and katie was a little bit further back than i think she'd like to be uh she was a little nervous when she looked at this morning and looked at those shifting conditions. She thinks she got a, a raw end of the stick on, this, on the swim pontoon. I think she was uh, hoping that that side of the bay was a little bit better, and obviously it wasn't. Yeah, the athletes chose each other's spots on the swim pontoon as part of uh, another little wrinkle we call the slot draw here at Super League Triathlon. And the women were not necessarily that good to each other as we see the swim spreading out completely. They've got... They know where the... Uh, the spot is they need to hit the beach, but everyone's taking an incredibly different line. Well, it's always quicker to be running along the beach. So this is always this was going to be the interesting part of the beach swim, where the people went straight in, where the women decided to take a straight line from the can, which means you had more running on the beach, which is always faster, or whether you, you, you took the left off the can and, and came into the area where you have to come. So Danielle's obviously decided to do that, but we'll see what was the better move. We saw you do that in the age group race earlier today, Chris. You went straight in for the beach and ran down the beach. It didn't, and, uh... it didn't help me at all. Was <laughs> yeah, that your much. swimming that was the problem? Yeah, my swimming was the problem. We were, we were on the same team, and he came out of the water in seventh of a possible ten. Two-time <laughs> Hawaii Ironman. We had Ali Brownley on the bike, though, there so that go. helped. And there is Jeff Coat, who's hit the beach first, and you'll see her joined by Taylor Spivey, who's made up a lot of time there. Danny D. Francesco Summer and Cook. Summer Cooker, our top four, as they head up the stairs and into transition in front of this great Porto Cristo crowd for the first time. But there are still athletes coming out of the water, and there is many, many elements to contend with in that swim, as there is all the way across. But at the moment, it's the two Aussies from Spivey and Cook. Great had swimming. a great second lap on that swim there. She moved up quite a few places and yeah. had a really good swim exit, and that's put her in a really good position for this transition now. Very narrow transition area, so you have to really watch out as Spivey comes out of transition. Kirsten Casper in the red heading in. Charlotte McShane's there. Yuko Takahashi as well. Kirsten Casper in the red overtaken by Rachel Glamour in the green. But out the front of all of them is Emma Jeffcoat. She spent some time out in front in recent weeks. She did some time at the front of the bike in the Gold Coast Grand Final for WTS Racing. And she is up this big hill for the first time. This is the 13% hill and it is tough and we're going to be heading up it many many times across the course of the weekend it looks it looks almost like they're crawling to begin with but actually it's just so deceptive how steep this hill is and they went straight up it out of transition so there was no time to get any speed up we had the camera on emma there the whole time and it just looked like she was going really slowly but that is just how steep this hill is the, the television doesn't do it justice at all does it and it's so critical this transition because you literally have 50 meters until the, the kick starts and uh and it can really spread it out. If, you, if you're tardy in transition, it, it, you can pay for it here. The short shoot. So the short shoot was run by Emma Jeffco. Emma she Jeffco took the short shoot on the top of that on that climb. So she has the advantage. She was first out of the water. And what that will force the others to do is really chase her down this hill and into the next hill, which just gives her that little bit of time, a little bit of space to breathe. And she's going to force them to string out now. And this is a really, really tough right-hand turn here. It's very, very narrow, a very narrow entry, quite a wider exit. But if she gets through this, she's got a straight line. And she's done it comfortably, which is great. Yeah, there's some taking a very delicate line through that first one. And, of course, you can... You can lose a race there, but you can't win it there. So that's the, the idea that's taken. But up the second hill, the Church Hill, we're calling it. Emma Jeffcoat is in the lead from Yuki Ta Yuko Takahashi. Rachel and they are powering up again. Takahashi turns at the top from Rachel Klammer, Taylor Spivey. 
Kirsten Casper's there, and in the pink at the back of your screen is Katie Zafira is in about 10th position. She needs to stay in touch if she can. I think that's a bit further back than Katie would probably want to I find agree. herself at this point, especially coming into this corner. I think this is the toughest corner of the whole course. They're taking that very, very cautiously there, and I think that's that's probably the hardest part of the whole course, actually. It's fast downhill, it's a hard right-hander, it's off camber, it's on carpet as well. I mean, thankfully it's not wet because I really think that would be a, a massive factor. But yeah, to go into that corner, sort of eighth, ninth position in a long string of people, it's not where you want to be. And I'm sure Katie will do everything she can to move up a bit more as she comes through this race. And, and the difficult thing for Katie now is you, it's a very, very tight course. If you're a Formula One driver, it's very much like that Monaco Formula One course where moving up is very difficult. So we opened up this hill to make the athletes have to make a move on the most difficult part of the course. So if you're in Katie Zafaris' position right now and she seems to be a little bit back off that fourth wheel, she needs to work this climb. Yeah, she's had a tough start to this race because she was a little bit further back coming in out of the swim, coming into transition, starting the bike. She's just been on the, she's just had not had that upper hand that she's had in so many of the races we've seen. As then Jeff Coat took the took the short shoot so early, it strung the bike up down, strung, strung out the bike, sorry, down that first hill. Then she was at the back of the pack as they went down into that hard right hander, and she's just not really had a chance to catch her breath yet. I don't think she's not found her rhythm and found found her form, the normal Katie that we're we're used to seeing. And her strength. Strength is a strength. She rides a very, very big gear, and I think on a course like this, being able, I was talking to Rachel Clammer before the event, and she was like, look, I really want to put Katie in a position where I can slow it up on the climb, make her use that big gear, and then attack her, because uh, she's not renowned for spinning up a hill, and this is too steep to ride too big a gear, so very, very difficult for her to move up if she doesn't do it in the critical part of this course. We've seen Yuko Takahashi actually on the lot on the front of this course a lot so far. She's been either in first or second in the group the whole way around. She's really riding very controlled. She's, she is controlling this group. And it's someone like her and potentially Rachel Klammer that I'm expecting to see do that. So a group of about 10 riders and Desiree Ridner is having some trouble with her bike. She hasn't been eliminated, but she's having some issues with her bike as they Look to slow people, so maybe she's had a slight accident there, Des Ridener, and she's lost a lot of time. So, an attack though from Yuko Takahashi, who is stringing them out somewhat, and don't forget that all this time is going to be paid for in stage three. Yuko Takahashi from Taylor Spivey, Emma Jeffcoat, Rachel Clammer as well there. So two of our split leaders from Malta are and involved Zafira's, in the front pack. Zafira's is quite a bit further down there. She's just not quite made it on. She doesn't seem to have quite found us, found her feet in this group. She's dangling off the back there. And as Chris said, her strength is her strength and she's really got to find a rhythm and settle in here. But she needs to move up that group a bit. It's obviously hurting her every time they go around a corner, this fast downhill. She's not getting any, any time to breathe. She's not getting a, any chance to get on the back onto the group. And I know all these girls are going to want to hurt her because she is the one to beat at the moment. She's and, got a perfect score. She, and a course like this, it's all about power to weight. And you're looking at the smaller women up the front now. They're in, in Katie's position, you can see her now. Very big gear. She's using her strength to get over the top, but she has to move through because it's a very narrow exit out of this turn, which forces them into single file before the right-hand turn at the bottom. And I think, as you said earlier, the girls on the front, the women on the front, have that advantage as they come off this descent. So being up the front of this course is, is critical. She's just moved herself up there into third position, so she's done a really good job there of just finding a little bit of space for herself. It might have been that the girls took it a little bit easier up the hill that time, or whether she just actually found found that little extra gear she needed, but she's now in a much more comfortable position, and that will help her going forward in the race. Desiree Ridner has popped up on our timing screens as being nearly a minute back, so she must have had an accident there on that corner you're seeing right there as they head up Church Hill, but about a minute, and there's a few people down there at the 40 to 50 second mark already back, and this is a long, long race and we're not going to see a lot of people make it towards the end at the moment there is your lead pack and taylor spivey who came in miss jersey but made a splash literally and figuratively in malta by winning the opening uh, swim time trial and figured all the way throughout the racing leads this one as they head down for another lap and this tight right hand turn to the rest of the paper clip if you like at the moment but you can see a group there of about seven or eight and a big, big gap back to the chasing pack who will be worrying so much about losing time in stage three of this triple mix. But Katie Zafiris in the pink there is your championship leader and she's moved herself up that train somewhat. 
this is a sort of course where you actually want to be at the front. Okay. It's an advantage to be at the front. Yes, maybe you have to do a little bit more work, take some of that, take some of the wind on your own, but you're in so much more control if you're at the front of the course. These corners come thick and fast. You can just actually breathe a bit, take control. You're not going to get caught up in any crashes that happen in front of you on these descents. Hopefully we don't see any, but if we do, you definitely don't want to be further back in the group. Well, you're seeing that with Summer Cook. She seems to put herself at the back of the course, or the back of the pack a lot of the time in this race, and this Constantine effect off this climb when you're coming at speed to the right hander at the bottom after this descent there is nowhere to, to move up so as they as the women are coming around that corner they're, they're, they're taking off the heat of the brakes and then they uh, accelerate out it just works like a concertina and actually is a lot more difficult when you're at the back than it is at the front. It is, and I think that's what we saw Katie struggling with in those first two laps. She started off on the bike not as far up as she would want. That really affected her. She's now got herself into the right position. Yeah, and there's been an attack on that climb. Yes, there has. Taylor Spivey leading it. Yes. Yuko Takahashi, Katie Zafiris, Rachel Klammer, and Kirsten Casper alongside Joe Brown. So right now, there's five athletes. Joe Brown, sorry, is the one on the back, and I think Casper is the one that they've dropped behind, but that that's a big moment. That damage was done by Taylor Spivey, that whole climb. She went top to bottom in front and uh, and, and, and separated the group. And, and young Joanna Brown's been very, very tactically smart. She sat about fourth wheel the whole way through. She had a great swim, and uh, she's been able to get away with this group of five. Yeah, I think I'm most impressed at the moment by Yuko Takahashi. I just think she's shown a huge amount of control, awareness. She's tactically played it very, very smart. And it's not just about getting through this round as well as possible. It's about preserving yourself as much as you can for the next two that are coming and then for tomorrow where they've got two further rounds to come. So I think she's done a really good job of, of just being tactically smart. And that's our first All elimination. All right, there we go. First elimination coming up. And that is the dreaded yellow flag. And Claudia, Claudia Seabock. The 21-year-old from Hungary who has just given her all across Super League racing. She's found the pace very, very hot and certainly is the best in the world are here and she will play no further part in the triple Taylor, mix. Taylor Spivey's going to grab herself the short shoot here. Yep. She's first off the bike, which means she gets the shortcut just after the... Uh, after this hill, she'll come down and she'll be able to have the little shortcut advantage, which is about five or six seconds. So it is significant in this racing. We thought the course was very, very difficult. The short shoot should play a significant role in the racing. It was at the discretion and the, and the request of the athletes. So this is a significant advantage. So Taylor could really set it up for herself here. So Katie's got some work to do. Yes. Taylor was just asking them, wasn't she, where, where the short shoot is? I'm sure I saw her asking yep. Michael, the race director, where, where do I take it? Where do I take it? So she'll be looking to utilize that as soon as possible, I'm sure. Yep. The, uh, the the run short shoot is not on the hill as they go up where the bike short shoot is. They won't go quite as far up on the bike as they do uh, on the run, sorry, as they do on the bike. It'll be at the other end of the course. Well, there was a so mistake. There's a little bit there of confusion by... there, a mistake. Yes. It looked like. But I think Rachel Klammer, who went up a little bit too far and didn't come at the turnaround, and that's why there's a little gap back from her uh, to Katie Zafiris. But at the moment, if you're just joining us, Taylor Spivey of the USA in the blue swimmer's jersey is leading this triple mix opening stage. Katie Zafiris also of the USA. You can see there in the pink. And Yuko Takahashi of Japan, the Asian champion from 2017 and 2018, is chasing uh, those two. Behind them, Rachel Klammer, who lost a little bit of time. Two-time Olympian, the 29-year-old from the Netherlands. And at the back, Joanna Brown. The bronze medalist from the Commonwealth Games. So some incredibly well-credentialed athletes. As we look further back, that's Elena Danilova of Russia, number 97, who's battling with Sarah Alexander. They're running out of shot from the US and Megan Foley from the US as well. And they are right on the bubble of the 92nd mark. So hot is the pace here as our championship leader and the world number two, Katie Zafiris, after an incredibly dominant weekend last weekend in Malta has taken the char uh, taken charge at the front pass and another elimination for Aaron Story. Well, this is going to be interesting now because Taylor Spivey has been able to take a time. She's moved to the front and the short shoots just after this right-hand turn. They'll run up to a dead left-hand turn up here, but she's going to get about a five-second advantage. So it's significant because we only have one lap to do. It's a good advantage. She seemed to be very, very relaxed. She went out comfortably. She's looking at signaling for it here, and here it is right there on the left, on the right of yep. screen. She will take the short shoot, Taylor Spivey, which there it is. is a big mental boost for her, but also a bit of a mental blow for the chasing pack who have to run about another 10 or so metres. And there you can see maybe a 20 metre gap all of a sudden from Taylor Spivey and she knows she can put time into the chasing pack because as we say a pursuit start for stage three which is coming up 
obviously uh, in, in two stages time and any time that she can get will be very, very handy as they head off for the last stage. Katie Zafiris, our championship leader. And well done to Rachel Clammer for hopping back on Katie Zafiris' shoulder after making that little error beforehand. So she's had to work a little bit harder and she spent a lot of the last couple of weeks chasing Rachel Clammer and she's done it very well. I think the big advantage that Taylor's got here is that she's been able to run her pace. Exactly. She hasn't had to change too much, whereas this is a really sapping course. There's a lot of up, a lot of downhill. It's really hard to find a rhythm. Taylor's been able to go out of transition first, find her own rhythm, make the others catch her. Then she's taken the short shoot. She's again making the others catch her. So it's going to be a game of them trying to keep their cool while she's forcing them to make changes. There is Vincent Louis to the left of screen. There's partner of Taylor Spivey and that men's championship leader who'll be racing in a couple of hours time just encouraging his girlfriend to keep pushing keep pushing and there's so much talent right behind her but you're right she's controlled the pace of this one she's utilized uh, the short shoot to great effect and she had the tongue out there she, she was yeah, exactly. she was talking with Vincent this morning about the short shoot I was actually over here over li and listening to them over breakfast and uh, that was a tactical move by her she really made that move on that on that last lap of the bike she split the group up she grabbed that short shoot and you're right I think it could be the winning move and it's it's put Katie Zafiris on the back foot it's broken that group up and if I'm honest, I think the best thing Katie can do is actually not chase her down now for the longevity of this yeah. race for her in the later stages. She doesn't want to be chasing. Another elimination, and it's another American, Megan Foley, one of our qualifiers from Penticton as well, who's been gallon across the course of the last couple of weeks, but uh, her day will finish early and she'll have plenty in the tank for tomorrow's sprint enduro. But here we are, back with your front three. Three special jerseys for three very, very fast women. The blue swimmer's jersey, Taylor Spivey, our overall leader, Katie Zafiris, and our bike leader, Rachel Clammer, who, by her own admission, has had some struggles on the bike in the middle part of this season after having an accident, but it really came back for her last week in Malta, and it saw her into second position, which is a huge momentum boost, and this is the kind of course you need to be brave on the bike if you're going to stay with the leaders. Yeah, absolutely. You need to be confident. You need to be brave, as you said. You need to take some chances, put yourself at the front. I definitely think the front is the best place to be. Seeing Taylor run this downhill very well here, and Katie is just gradually, gradually inching her way back up to Taylor, and that's that's the best way to do it. If she's going to try and catch Taylor on this one, there should be no surges. You don't want to put yourself into the red too often, so just gradually, gradually catching back up, and that, that's what we're seeing here. Well, it's all set up for the for stage three, the pursuit start, so we're accumulating lost time between these two stages, and the, and the winner across the line is the person who wins stage three. So... Uh, She's been very, very smart, as you said. Katie can limit a loss to see it'll be one or two second deficit. I think she'll be happy with that. Such is the pace. I think we're only going to see 11 women through to stage two, but it doesn't matter for Taylor Spivey, who takes stage one of the triple mix and through the yellow tape for the first time. Katie Zafiris a couple of seconds back, and there'll be a further five or so seconds to Rachel Clammer. So that's what they'll have to pay first up. Of course, there's another stage to go and a sprint finish here between... Yuko Takahashi and Joanna Brown for fifth place. And Joe Brown, I think, does it just... Just a, just a little bit of fun there. I think yeah, it's a dip yeah. at the line. I think she knows it doesn't really matter too much in the in the standings. They're but, races, uh, though. Races yeah. are races. When they can need you to switch win. it off? Yeah, yeah. I think I think that was just a little bit of fun with a friend. <laughs> First and Casper coming across the line. Second place in the championship. Behind her, third place in the championship. Summer Cook and fifth place overall. Jody Stimson, so they are all well in contention. Emma Jeffcoat, who led for parts of the swim and parts of the bike, comes in as well. And there is Vincent Louis and Taylor Spivey discussing things. They've spent so much time together this week, almost staying away a little bit from they the rest of, rest of the um, the athletes who've mixed a lot. But uh, they're here and they're very, very focused. I, I think Kirsten Casper and Summer Cook will be very, very disappointed with that stage. I, they lost it on the last lap of the bike. They were right in contention. It was Taylor Spivey who, who put the hammer down and distanced Emma Jeffcoat and, and those three off the back. And uh, they've lost a lot of time. They really need to do something on this second stage if they want to, if they want to look at winning today's race. Absolutely. At the moment, Taylor Spivey has a two-second advantage over Rachel Clam, uh, over Cody Zafiris. Rachel Clammer nine seconds back. Brown and Takahashi, 17 seconds back. Casper and Cook, 33 and 34 seconds back, which is a huge deficit for them to make up in stage two. Stimson, 37 back. Emma Jeffcoat, 46. 
and Charlotte McShane a minute and six seconds back. We saw Danny DeFrancesco, who was that last non-eliminated athlete uh, across the line just then, but she'll be a long way back as well. And we've already lost six in the opening stage, such as wow. this brutal course and the pace at the front that really gives you an idea of just how fast it went. Let's have a look back at how the whole thing played out. And slot position number one on the beach seemed to be the best one, and Des Ridener had a great swim. But Emma Jeffcoat and Danny D. Francesco let out the first time. Then they turned around and went back down. And here's where Taylor Spivey really came into her own on that swim. Uh, she really put the hammer down and showed her class. We headed out onto the bike. There is Spivey in the blue behind Emma Jeffcoat, who does lead out from time to time. De Francesco was there as well. Up and down the Church Hill for the first time. And the field really started to string out. And already we could see that there were going to be big gaps. And the men are all here watching as well. And they've seen how this one plays out. And I can see a few of them right next to me talking about how they're going to attack it. The first elimination was Claudia Seabock. But at the front, Taylor Spivey took the short shoot on the run. And she could not be headed from that one. But as you, you're right, though, Katie Zafiris was smart with how she attacked it. Yeah, she did a really good job there. She didn't have the best start. She didn't have the greatest swim. And the first two laps of her run, of her bike, sorry, weren't really probably what she would have wanted them to be and made her life a little bit harder. But she did a really good job towards the end of the bike. She made that breakaway. She kept calm and composed through the run, narrowed that gap down to just a couple of seconds yep. at the end. And that actually puts her in a really nice position going forward. It was right. a real case of damage control, but she did a good job. Official results from Triple Mix Stage 1. The biggest spread I think we've ever seen. Taylor Spivey will pick up two seconds, as I said, from Klammer, Takahashi, Brown, Casper and Cook. Stimson, Jeff Cook and McShane will already pay a minute 06. And, of course, we're going to go into Stage 2 with even more. We'll head warm down, get cold, warm up and go again. And that's what Super League's all about. You can see that they've got the swim goggles and uh, stuff down the front of, of the swimmers. So this is all kind of new territory for triathlon, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't actually employ that tactic in Jersey. Maybe I should have done, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I wasn't especially good at the triple mix, but the very first round really threw me. But after that, I, I, I sort of found my feet a little bit. I think um, it's wherever you think you're going to be able to get your hat on quickest from. We've seen in the men's race a lot, people putting the hat on actually as they're even coming towards the end of sort of other legs. But I think what we'll find here is it will happen on their way down to the, the swim start. And actually, for me, I found it was just as easy to pick it out of my box and, and yeah. go again. But really, more often than not now, Virtually all of these girls you're seeing, they've all got their hats stuffed down the, down the suit. And, and when you're standing here right now, how are the legs? You, you're the only one amongst the three of us here who have done it. Are, are you tired? Are you fatigued? Is, are you anxious? Well, at this exact point in Jersey, I was like, oh gosh, what have I got myself into? That was horrific. Um, and I've got to go twice more and try not to get eliminated, which I just about managed to do. Um, but some of those girls like Kirsten Casper and Summer Cook will be knowing that they've got to really attack this race because they're already 35 seconds-ish behind. They can't afford to lose any more time especially because they're they're doing well in the overall standings they don't want to muck up today yeah so they're going to have to really push this run and the swim finish is a, is a big difference right and they did you find that more difficult is that going to set those girls up in particular to, to have a better race in, uh, yeah. in the first stage in jersey i find it absolutely brutal all right they did a swim bike run now it is time for run bike swim and it is only 11 athletes left out of our 17 that started this race such is the pace so if you're just joining us there was a swim bike run that's the first stage of the triple mix a 10 minute break then a run bike swim and then another 10 minute break and then a bike swim run and that will be our finish and the first across the line will be the winner and already to the front of that pack kirsten casper who and Summer Cook, you can see there as well. But Kirsten Casper knows she needs to push the pace because every single second lost in Stage 1 and Stage 2 will be paid for in a pursuit start in Stage 3. And Cook and Casper are already down by 30-odd seconds, and they really need to push the pace. So a couple of laps on this run, and there is that group of remaining athletes. And I'm just I'm surprised by the fact we've lost six already, and you know that we're going to be losing more by the time we arrive in Stage 3. It's like, and I keep saying it though, but it's like the Hunger Games of triathlon. <laughs> you cannot make a small error. Yeah, for me in Jersey, I definitely felt that my error on the first leg uh, in the very first race cost me so big that on the final round, I was absolutely desperate to not get knocked out, not be eliminated. And I was watching that countdown clock every time I came past transition. And I think I made it through on the very last 
leg at about 128. So very, very <laughs> and that's nearly the world that. champion saying that. So <laughs> yeah. you know how hard it is. Yeah, I got properly caught out in Jersey, and uh, I, I, I improved from that point onwards. But it was, it was really hard work. Oh, We're seeing some of the girls here who can use these downhills to run well down the hill, from stretching out the field, and that often actually breaks up fields more than running up the hill. Running downhill is actually quite a skill. A lot of people over strike. They maybe heel strike. They, they're almost breaking themselves. They're putting a breaking force on themselves. And both this course and the course in Malta have really been a bit different in that, that we don't see much downhill running. And we're, we're seeing that being brought into, into play in Super League. Yeah, and they were the most critical parts of both the races. Uh, they actually won the male race with uh, Vincent Louis really using that downhill to, to catch back up to Henry Schumann. And uh, as you said, in this race in particular, they're using it very well. What's very interesting is that both Kirsten Casper and Summer Cook have swapped those red jerseys. That's the runner's jersey. So they're technically the fastest runners in this field. So they really need to work this opening run leg to, to set it up. And Taylor Spivey's drifted a little bit further back than I think she'd like to be. Yeah, she obviously had such a good first leg, not quite as far to the front as she'd probably want to be at this particular point, but those girls in front of her are all in fantastic runners, really. And I think someone like Summer, having not had the best first leg today, she really needs to push this, and I think she can run faster downhill than all of the others. Yeah. I think in Malta, she went away down that hill and then almost seemed to ease off a little bit and let them come back to her. I think she needs to push on now, make them come back to her, make them surge, and see if she can uh, cause a bit of damage to some of her rivals. Is that a confidence thing, you think? Because I, I noticed that as well in Malta. She seemed to, to get the gap and then look over her shoulder and, and back off. And uh, if, she, if she stayed committed to that, it could have opened the gaps right up. Yeah, I'm not sure if maybe she just didn't want to go on her own or yeah. what, but she definitely looked the most comfortable of the three Americans running down the hill in Malta. So Kirsten Casper leads as they go up the Church Hill for the second time ahead of Katie Zafiris. So she'll be try she'll be hoping that Katie Zafiris puts the brake on, but if she does, that'll be the first time it's happened across the course of the the year's racing. Joanna Brown in third position. You can see Rachel Clammer there and Summer Cookie. She is just trying to get a little bit of clear space in front of her and continue to push that and maybe get to the top of this turnaround and be able to let it go a little bit and have no one in front of her as she hits that downhill. Yeah, you really use this downhill and, and they've got to start thinking now about this short shoot and winning this uh, this opening run leg because it allows them to cruise up the climb. We saw it with Emma Jeffcoat in the opening, uh, in the opening stage. She was able to take a time through transition, get over the climb, get a five-second advantage on the descent and position herself into lap one. And uh, she drifted back through the race, but it looks like Kirsten Casper has got her eyes on it. A few of these girls here want to be really careful as they come into transition that they're not going to get distance and the group's going to go away right as they head out onto the bike. We obviously saw that break happen in the first round, but we really... People like Jodie Stimpson, I think Rachel Clammer was in there as well. They're, they're just off the back of this group, and this is a real vital point for them now. They don't want to end up in a in a lone pack or being being broken away from. And Kirsten's gone after that short shoot. That was a committed attack off the front. I think that's a very, very smart move for her. She's... Uh it says a lot. She's, she's, she realises she's a bit far back, and uh, now's the time to make up for that distance. You can see her getting it right now. All right, you can see Michael Thompson, the race director, letting Kirsten Casper know that she has indeed earned the short shoot on the bike, so she'll have the opportunity to do that. Summer Cook is already behind at least Joanna Brown and Katie Zafiris, but out of transition first as well after a good transition. Casper from Brown, Zafiris. Cook is in fourth position, and she looks a little ginger. Rachel Clammer. That transition oh, that's there, that's going to really cost her. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think in this level of, of, of triathlon, you really do want to be mounting your bike as a flying mount if you possibly can. And I think that's something that's going to potentially mean, may be the difference between her making this little breakaway group of three and not making it. And there is a, a sizable gap back to Clammer. And she'll be having flashbacks of Malta where she was chasing a group of three and Cook, Casper and Zafira almost the whole way around on Sunday. And now she's enforced to bridge a gap again because these three have great engines and they know how to maintain a gap if they can all behind Katie Zafiris who's probably the physically the strongest athlete in the field and she really shows it up these climbs but there you go Kirsten Casper takes the short shoot at the top and she's going to have a sizable advantage look at that from our fantastic drone shot of just how big an advantage that is probably 30 metres, yeah. as opposed to in Malta, it wasn't the steep hill as it is there, uh, as it is here, and the advantage was negated somewhat, but suddenly, Kirsten Casper is a good seven or eight seconds, or even more, ahead of the field, if she can just keep pushing. She doesn't have that headwind we had in Malta as well, so 
And the big advantage outside of the distance is the ability to just take your time in this opening uh, opening lap. You, you, you come off that first discipline, the heart rate's up, you're, you're a little flustered. You can take your time now, get the straight lines and the even lines through the turns and... Uh, put the other women on the chase. She just is, catch a breather while yeah. she does it. And the girls behind, it's really the ones in this second chase group that we're seeing come up the hill now. So Rachel Clammer at the top there, and then you've got Taylor Spivey chasing in that group. Those are the girls who will have been trying to catch on to that front group. That front group is now splintered because Kirsten's off the front of it. So you've got Katie behind that, along with Joe chasing down Kirsten, and behind that, Rachel has to catch two groups almost to get to the front. So it puts the pressure on all the way down the field. Yeah. But uh, I've got to say, Katie Zafira, she'll know just how much of a gap she has on Kirsten Casper, and she'll know that she can let her get away a little bit in the front and not worry too much about it, as long as she stays ahead of Taylor Spivey, who is in about eighth position at the moment. So Zafira knows when to make her efforts, and she'll know that Casper is not a threat to her as much as Spivey is after what happened in stage one. Well, that, that's also in today's race, but I just saw going around relatively far back was Summer Cook, who we spoke has to be has to perform well in this stage but more so has to perform well in this in this weekend's racing to stay on the podium she's looking at trying to win this series for for Katie Zafiris she can she can just play defense if she performs the way she's been doing in Jersey and Malta she'll she'll shut this down so it seems like Kirsten Casper the only one that's committed to, to trying to shut out Katie Zafiris. Yeah, this has been a much more mature performance from Kirsten in this round than, than the first one. Maybe a little bit of panic came in, but this time round she's done, done a much better job and she'll be keeping her eyes out for any little breaks for sure. So they've gone back into a, a group of three. The work done by Joanna Brown and Katie Zafiris. Just a reminder of our championship points. There's 25 on offer for the weekend's racing. Zafiris is on 50, Casper 36, Cook 26, and just two points further back is Rachel Clammer, who'll know that with a good performance, she can launch herself up into a podium spot, and in Singapore, we'll be handing out 100,000 US dollars for our winner, and some hefty prize money as well for second and third. Of course, there's prize money all the way down, but the big money is on the podium, and Rachel Clammer will have an eye on Summer Cook and where she is, and Joanna Brown, who's currently in sixth position overall, seventh position overall, sorry too, if she can have a good weekend, she can launch herself up above Cassandra Bogran, who's not here, so she'll definitely do that, and Jody Stimson, who's on 18 points and six behind Clamour, so it's very congested in the middle part of our top five for the leaderboard, and plenty of money and plenty of kudos on the line for podium spots, but at the moment, Katie Zafiris is always concerned about positioning and right now she's in the best possible position first and if she can come through and do another lap on the bike she'll she will take the short shoot yeah Kirsten, for the final swim Kirsten just seems to be getting a little bit distance yeah. now around these yeah. around these last couple of corners she seems to be yo-yoing off the back a little bit not keeping it as tight to the to the wheel of Joanna Brown as, as she could be and that's just making life a bit harder for herself it's just Every, every extra meter she does that's a bit further behind is harder. She needs to be as close to Joe Brown as possible, conserve as much energy as possible. She's played it so smart so far. Don't lose it now. Katie Spheres right now be looking back at, at Taylor Spivey. She was just, what, one or two seconds back in stage one. It's a pursuit start in stage, uh, stage three. So she's probably looking at Kirsten Casper saying, I've got 30 seconds up my sleeve there in, in real time. So... And you're right, she's being distanced off on this climb. She's getting tired. Yeah, I think she's potentially paying for that effort she put in at the beginning. Yeah. I think it was the right tactic, I think, for someone who didn't have the first, the best first yeah. round here today. She had to go and had to have a have a big dig. She did that. She put herself in a great position, but I do think she's probably probably paying for it in the legs a little bit now. And this course is so, so unforgiving. It's yeah. not like you can catch your breath. You can't just roll around for a couple of laps and get yourself back together again. There's no time for that. It's constantly uphill, downhill, go again. Do you Brown thought, you know what, I'm just going to tack onto this back wheel and this is my, this is my train to, to distance between my competitors. Uh, and Katie's looking at this whole race now saying, okay, I can set this up. I've got the pursuit start in stage three and uh, I can have an easier stage three if I, uh, if I just put it all out now. Yeah, definitely. And Joanna came in at the end of the first stage in about fifth or sixth yeah. position, I think. So she was a little bit down, about 17 seconds, if I remember rightly. So just by hanging on to Katie here, she's getting more time on every other competitor and bringing herself <laughs> right back into the mix for the final leg. Does she have to swim to, to, to stay with Katie in a, in, a, in, a, in a match race? Is she able to enter the water? We've got the short shoot, so one of them's going to grab the short shoot, but can she tag Katie? In the yeah, I think, I think Joe would tell you that the swimming is her weakest leg. That said, the first stage today, she had a really good swim, put herself in the right position. Um, 
Katie's going to take the short shoot, so it will be difficult for Joanna to then get straight onto her because they'll be going into the water at slightly different points. Um, but she's got a massive buffer on the next people behind her. So swimming in clear water, very different from swimming in the mix in the, in the washing machine. That might just help her out. Well, she hasn't won the short shoot yet. I'm wondering if, if Joanna will jump That's her true. right before, which would be interesting to see whether she says to herself, look, I... I'm not as good in the water as Katie Safaris. I need this little yeah. advantage. I jumped the gun a bit there, haven't yeah. I? I've given yeah. Katie the short shoot. Well, she and, uh, looks Joanna so strong. Could have that's probably fair. <laughs> she looks so strong, right? She has been on the front. Maybe yes. that's why I've given her the short shoot there. <laughs> and she's won pretty much everything she's been in. She has. This uh, this um, event, this format, the triple mix, is the only one this season that she hasn't won, I believe. I think yes. that was Cassandra Bergrand won that in yes. Jersey. All three stages. Um, so... Um, Katie was second on that day, I seem to remember, but she's won everything else. And uh, yeah, at this point, she's putting a nice buffer between herself and her closest rival, which at the moment is obviously Taylor Spivey. So it's looking looking good for Katie today. It is. It certainly is. She was two seconds behind Taylor Spivey in stage one. She'll make all of that up and more uh, in this stage. Rachel Clammer was nine seconds back in stage one. And you're right, Joanna Brown and Yuko Takahashi were 17 seconds back. The pair of them, Casper 33 and Cook 34 and she'll leak even more time um, in uh, in stage two before we arrive at stage three and the pursuit start but at the moment it's a race in two between these two katie zafiris of america and joanna brown of canada so much class and experience and long long resumes between these two and they have taken control and now the name of the game is to try and put as many seconds as possible between them and the chasing pack and you can see already it's two-thirds of the hill back to Taylor Spivey who has taken control of the second of the chasing pack if you like because she knows that they she can't afford to let Katie Zafiris disappear in front of her and she knows she's a very very good swimmer she's in our swimmers jersey she's uh you saw her speaking to Vincent Louis her, her boyfriend who is one of the most tactically astute male racers there are and uh maybe she's thought look I went very very hard in stage one it's time to to limit my losses here to the women up front in stage two and it looks like Joanna's not going to chase Katie for the short shoot I think that's a big mistake yeah she probably hasn't maybe not thought about it if I think Joe just looks a little bit on edge yeah, to be honest does. I think Katie yeah. her face just looks really controlled and relaxed she's obviously found her rhythm now Joe definitely looked like she was just sort of hanging on for grim death a little bit there yeah I'm surprised though that we don't see a, a sprint for the short yeah. shoot considering the advantage that it has but maybe Joanna Brown's just it's trying a great, to get through it. Yeah, it's a great tactical plan, but there's one thing having the great tactics and another thing having the actual physiology at any <laughs> moment to do it, you know. <laughs> it's easy from here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it seems so easy. Easy, easy to say what they should be doing, but yeah, when you're in it and you're absolutely on your limit already, it's it's, it's a hard gig. Well, you're seeing it just in the run into the water. Joe's uh, the gap's starting to open up. She's definitely fatigued. I saw the grimace on the climb on those last two laps. She was just hanging on to Katie's wheel, and I think she's uh, she's thinking, look, Let's get through this swim and, uh, and and stay as close to the front for the pursuit as possibly, but possibly can. But I think Katie's got this uh, in the bag. Yeah, she's checking where her swim entry is because with that short shoot, she's just finding out where it is that she can she can enter the water. We've got Joe coming down. Taylor has closed up quite a lot of that gap there, and Joe really wants to keep that gap out because then they will actually start the final leg together. Super League explores the idea that triathletes need to be the best in three disciplines. It doesn't matter what order. And what would it be like to do that kind of bike, then run along soft sand, and then dive in the water? Well, I'm terrible on sand anyway because I run on my toes, so I just sink. Uh, so <laughs> it's really not for me anyway. But running on the sand after having done as much as they've already done so far, especially with those four laps on the bike up and down that hill, you saw it there. There wasn't any sprinting on the sand going on. They were just sort of tiptoeing along almost to get back in, and I, I can't say I blame them. At and the moment, Summer Cook, a minute and five seconds back in this stage alone. So it, she on might paper, not she's even eliminated. make it in. She yeah. will be eliminated on total pursuit times. Which would be a big shot for the day, actually. Summer's been be. really good in the Super League all round, and to get eliminated on the day, if that does happen, that would that would be a big shock result, I think. Heading into, you can see Katie Zafiris at the left of your screen. There she is, rounding the opening boy. We Still in look, control of this swim. And we need to look for Taylor Spivey. I think was third or fourth in. And 14 uh, seconds back through transition Spivey, so 12 seconds back overall if it stays in. the same. Yeah, third in, just behind Joanna Brown. And she is a strong swimmer, as you said, in the blue jersey. That denotes the strongest swimmer from the last round. But on top of that, I would say she's got the edge over Joanna Brown. And from this aerial shot, we can see it's bunching up a little bit. Um, Joanna Brown's on the, on the front of that main pack, and then we'll have Taylor Spivey behind her. 
pack force to deal with the weight from the boat there, which doesn't help as well just a little bit. And these are the, the factors that come into play. But the current standings as we went through transition was Zafiris two seconds back to Brown, 14 to Spivey. Casper was 16, Clamour 20, along with Stimson, Takahashi 29, and then a big, big gap back to Charlotte McShane at 46 seconds, Cook 105, Emma Jeffcoat 112, and Daniel DeFrancesco 118. So those two or three at the back are dicing with elimination through this stage, and we'll two keep our eye on... There's two very different lines into the beach here, and... and what we haven't seen in Super League up until this estate, until this event, is that uh, it's a two-lap swim. It's uh, coming out of the water is very, very diff- difficult. And on the beach now, you're seeing these two different lines to the to the sand. We have to run around a fixed position on the beach, and uh, the women are looking at it and saying, "Okay, is it quicker to run? Is it quicker to take the closest route through the swim?" And I think Taylor's made a very, very good move here. It looks like Taylor in second place. It is in the blue jersey. Yeah, and she's taking the quickest route to the beach and just running a little bit further along it. But regardless, Katie Zafiris is going to be the first out. And here she goes up onto the beach. It's very, very deep. And it's a a very, very uh, quick rise from the sand as she makes the turn. She'll head back into the water for another around 120-odd metres, I think. She's going to decide to go across further and take the most direct route as well. She had a little glance across there just to see what the gap was. And Taylor has brought herself back up into second and I thought it was Kirsten Casper I thought I saw the red suit there Kirsten actually having been right at the front of the race took in, take the short shoot early then distance off the front two then she actually tacked onto the back of Taylor and Taylor's brought her right back into the race here yeah, and Joanna Brown has as we said she looked like she was blowing a little bit and she's she's dropped down through the the placings as we head into the last of the second stage the last leg the swim this will be it and there'll be another 10 minute break and we'll see athletes get eliminated no doubt on the way out of the swim and maybe we'll only have six or seven left for the final stage but that is what it takes to compete in Super League triathlon and right now Katie Zafiris is doing what she's done so well across the course of the rounds in Jersey and in Malta last weekend means she's more than likely at this point going to have to go solo on the final yeah. final round but we've seen Katie do that time and time again now she's obviously not afraid to, to take there. the course on her own absolutely she's very comfortable just going you know what it's just me on my bike now for the first four laps and she'll she'll take the whole thing on her own and I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't get caught if she just does it all day on her own on the final stage today takes a very special mindset and a very special level of uh, self-belief to be able to do that and to make it stick as you say we see a lot of athletes make a little break, turn around, hope for someone to go with them. Uh, but other athletes are, are willing to push the pace from the front, and Katie Zafiris is certainly one of them. And uh, both of you have been too in the past. Yeah, with Katie, I think she's riding on quite a lot of confidence at the moment. She's done so well in the Super League series this year. She's been dominant, to be honest. She's not really been touched. So she'll know that she can do that. She can go on her own, and, and she's strong enough on these hills. She's a real strength athlete, and she just shows that every time she goes up a hill. And I think she's, she thinks she's probably going to go on her own in the final, final stage, all on her own the whole way. Striding it out on the soft sand, and she'll head into transition and over the finish line but to come back on herself here she has to come back on herself and up the stairs and there is michael thompson who's always there to lend a helping hand it is a little confusing the triple mix for the athletes out there to remember which way to go but she did do the right thing kay zafiris has to round that marker and then up the steps and through the start finish line for the second time here on saturday in round three Taylor Spivey actually just come about to enter the steps now, I think. She's not as far behind as you might think she might be. She's obviously got a couple of second advantage from the first round. And there we see her yeah, just coming is. around the corner. She's making this a bit closer than we probably anticipated. So she was 14 seconds back as they went into the water from Katie Zafiris, who'll be your stage two winner here of the triple mix. And it won't be 14 seconds as she comes across the line, Taylor Spivey. So those two will be right up the pointy end when we head into stage three in 10 minutes' time. And Kirsten Casper, who, as you say, had a strong start to that stage, dropped off a little bit, but brought it home. She knew the importance of staying at least in touch in terms of championship standings. Rachel Klammer comes in just ahead of Jody Stimson with Yuko Takahashi in seventh spot and Joanna Brown Joanna Brown who dropped a lot of places in that swim I think she paid for that bike didn't she she did a a great run at the beginning of that leg anyway but then on top of that that bike hanging tough with Katie I think we saw the pain etched across her face didn't we on that especially this final couple of hills and yeah she went back into the water there I think I think she paid for that a little bit 
There is Katie Zafir as your championship leader. Has been absolutely unbeatable pretty much across the course of Jersey and Malta. Has only dropped one race and it was the triple mix. She looks to add to her collection of format wins here with a very, very strong stage two Zafir. She'll have more time than anyone else to recover. There is Jeff Coat and Cook behind her who is having... A tough, tough day out, and you can see it on her face. Charlotte McShane crosses the line, and Di Francesco, last of all. They are your 11 who took part in Stage 2. You can see someone there with the... Who's that? Joanna Brown with the dressing gown on, trying to stay warm. No, Rachel Clammer, sorry. As they try to keep the heart rate down and get ready to go again. And this stage coming up is where it is all on the line. We'll see who's burnt their matches and who hasn't. And we'll look back in just a second at how that one all played out in stage two as the sun comes out here in Porto Cristo. There was 11 in this race managing to make it through to stage two. We'd lost six athletes. It was a run start. And at the front of that pack was Zephyrus. Brown and Cook, Casper as well. All athletes, I can confirm, finished within the 90 seconds in that one, so no eliminations from that round, although there's going to be huge, huge pursuit starts. Kirsten Casper, Katie Zafiris and Joanna Brown put the work in early on the bike, and I think that's what really cost Joanna Brown, isn't it, when we came to that latter part of that stage yeah i think you just you saw the the difference from going into the water sort of not too far behind katie in second place and then ending up about fifth or sixth i think at the end of yeah. at the end of that day and or the end of the stage and lost quite a bit of time more importantly to be honest the positions aren't aren't as important as the time gap and she didn't do as well as she would have probably hoped in the position that she went into the water Katie Zafiris, just having a look at where the short shoot was, she led into the water. Joanna Brown was second into the water and she dropped through the placings, but the engine on Katie Zafiris is just second to none when it comes to Super League triathlon racing. That's what we are continually finding out as the season progresses. She came out of the water. She looked... That's the fastest run on the scene I've seen of anyone. I was watching it with, with, with great jealousy there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she strided out and you'll know that she has a little bit left in the tank too. She's a very, very smart racer. A confirmation that Spivey finished nine seconds back, so she'll finish, She'll start seven seconds behind Katie Zafiris uh, as we add up the results. There we go. Spivey nine seconds back. Casper 16. Clamour 29, along with Stimson and Takahashi there as well. Joanna Brown dropped to 36. Emma Jeffcoat 112. Summer Cook 113, which hurts. Charlotte McShane 119. And our last of all was Danny Francesco, who did extremely well to even make it into stage two. Such was the pace. Well, this is the third stage of the triple mix. It is a pursuit start and it is bike, swim, run. There is the triple mix overall. If you're just joining us, stage one, we had a swim, bike, run, and then a 10-minute break. Then it was run, bike, swim. We've just finished that. And now a pursuit-style start for bike, swim, run. So the added times between stage one and two will determine your penalty behind the leader who will be Katie Zafiris will take off first in the third stage and we will run it home the first athlete across the line wins Katie Zafiris will start unofficially we've got we've done a little bit of maths here we think that Taylor Spivey will start eight seconds back Rachel Klammer 36 seconds behind Zafiris Takahashi 46 seconds back and Casper one second behind her. So they'll be able to help each other a little bit and potentially Joanna Brown as well at 51 seconds. So there'll be a group there, the three of them, and Jody Simpson at 105. And then we drop below the 130 mark for Cook, Jeff Coat, Jeff Coat, sorry, McShane and Di Francesco at They're three gone. minutes and three seconds back. So they are gone. And we have seven contenders in this final stage, such as the... You know, the, the, the brutality, I guess, of, of the format and the course and the conditions has strung the field out so much that seven of our 17 women, who are all among the best in the world, uh, will actually make it into the third part of this race. Yeah, I think Rachel Clummer is going to be interesting on this one. She's sort of in no man's land there on her own at plus 36 seconds down from Katie Zafirez to start the day. She's in the green jersey, which is obviously an advantage starting this leg. This stage, sorry, starts with the bike, which is something that she's shown, especially in Malta, to be a real strength. She's got no real other opportunity, other option than yeah. to just ride hard. She's not going to be wanting to wait for those oh, other three. Oh, group hug. 
Yeah. The group hug there, try to stay warm. Good camaraderie That's that nice. you have here at Super League. It really How is. do they even have enough energy to talk to each other? Having done the age group race this have morning. Have you met I, us? Yeah, <laughs> that's always, true. Yeah, there's always, always talking. talking. No talking from Katie Zafir. Katie is ready. Katie is absolutely ready. She's bike, been ready for minutes. <laughs> bike swim run. That is all that stands between Katie Zafiris and a win in the triple mix. She was bested in Jersey by Cassandra Bogran. And this time there is no Cassandra Bogran. And Katie Zafiris will be looking to start her weekend off with a win. She runs to the bike. Taylor Spivey taking off eight seconds behind her. Rachel Klammer has a long, long wait, 28 seconds, and that will feel like an eternity it does. watching those two disappear into the I, distance. Uh, I started this a minute plus down in Jersey, and it felt like forever. I thought I was going to get lapped before I even actually started the bike leg. So it does, it really feels like forever. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but you are the world champion, that's okay, <laughs> and you're the best female commentator between the three of us. Well, I'd hope so. And the only female commentator well, between the three of us. Yes. But there we go. <laughs> Rachel Klammer takes off 10 seconds back to Yuko Takahashi, your Asian champion from 2017 to 2018. Starting a with her on. swim cap on, yes. Yep, there's a couple of them doing that, so they're going to spend the entire bike leg with the swim cap on. I think that's actually a heat thing as well. So I noticed some of them seem to be quite cold down there. Maybe that's what that group hug was was more about. And I, also, <laughs> I think so. I noticed as well Taylor only took a jacket off or a, 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 like a towel that she had around her as Katie started and that's only eight seconds before she was due to start. So she kept her towel around her literally as long as she possibly could do before she started. Yeah, conditions very cold but they are the same for everyone as we see our two leading athletes at the top of the turnaround on that 13% gradient hill, which is, we had Malta Mountain last week, and this is Mount Majorca this week because it is tough That's original. Up there. Yeah, thanks. I've, I've really gone out on a you, there. You've changed it around a lot there. Yeah, well, I changed the words around, so that'll do. I don't see you coming up with any names, but that's fine. We move on, and we go up Church Hill, okay, because there's a church at the top. Is that all right? See what you've done there. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. I just want to keep it simple for everyone watching around the world. Thank you for tuning in to Super League Triathlon. I hope you're enjoying what has been fantastic racing here in the women's triple mix and your two leaders. And this is all out racing now. There is nothing left to be tactical about. There is nothing left to worry about. There is three legs between these women and a victory in the triple mix and the maximum amount of points as they fight for 20,000 US dollars for the round win. And of course, championship points for that overall win of 100,000 US dollars. In the grand final in Singapore, and Katie Zafiris is looking to extend her championship lead. Eight seconds it was between her and Taylor Spivey as they took off in the first of these three legs, the bike. And we'll see what it is as they head through transition for the first time. But Spivey looks to have at least held the status quo to an extent. Yeah, both these girls just really confident on their bike, just look comfortable, great climbers, good technically. Yeah, they both they both just look like they're uh, they're in their element at the moment. They're not phased about the fact that they're both having to ride on their own. That there's there's no pack element to what they're doing right now. They're just they're just in their own little zones. And Taylor has a little bit of an advantage in the sense that she can see Katie up the road. She has someone to mark. She can measure her measure her effort, and at nine seconds, she's lost a second on a lap. Is that right? Nine. She started lost eight a second. Back, that's lost right. A second. Correct. There is one second between eight seconds and nine seconds. Good <laughs> mathematics I'm from Chris McCormack. Just, let me check that with the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's no mean feat when uh, when Katie Zafiris is the woman that you're attempting to chase down, and she'll know Spivey that she probably has the edge just if she can keep something in the tank in the swim, which is the middle leg of this race. She's a fantastic swimmer, but she's got to run at home, and Katie Zafiris is a is a, a fearsome runner. I think I think that gap's gone out a little yeah. bit just up that hill there, and just just saw one little small she clip of her, her face. She, as yeah. you said, Chris, she dropped her head. She doesn't look quite as comfortable, just as I was talking about how you know supremely confident and comfortable both these girls look. Taylor, I think, is beginning to pay for her earlier efforts on today, and that's what Katie's just done so well. The whole of the Super League series just measured her effort really well, really smartly, and yeah, she's I think she's going away a little bit now from Taylor. There is Spivey. You can see. Plenty of room behind them. Rachel Klammer went off 36 seconds back, but I don't know whether it's a tactical decision, but now her, Yuko Takahashi and Kirsten Casper, who were 10 seconds back at the start, have come together. Maybe yeah. she's 
dropped it back a little bit and said, we need to work together if we're going to do anything in this. I would say that was not the best tactical move. So maybe that's more a case of how much energy you physically yeah, got, you got left, left at yeah. this point. Just because I don't think Rachel will want to be in a pure swim and run race with those girls at the yeah, end. She yeah. was in a, a relatively good position to hopefully get on the podium at the end of the day. And I think the cyclist that she is, she would have wanted to just be on her own and to just have the race on her own all day long. Well, it's been a long race. It's they're, they're three short races, but to be able to get cold, as you say, and Rachel, one of the smaller athletes out there in the field, is it very easy for them to get very cold in the 10 minutes and in it's, between. It's the sort of thing she said has affected her before. Um, she doesn't enjoy the cold. She's one of the smaller athletes. She said she feels it a lot. So maybe that has sort of played into how she's feeling at the start of this third stage. It's quite yeah. ironic we're talking about being cold in Mallorca. Yeah. 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 But it is cold. I'm yeah, cold. Is, really well, back at home, it's, you know, zero degrees at the moment. So I don't oh, well, think we yeah, can talk relative. about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. relative. Yeah, Vicky Holland here with a uh, shorts and a t-shirt on, <laughs> basking in the in the beautiful weather as it tops 15 degrees. She's come from the UK. Stop lying! I'm just wearing a bikini. <laughs> I didn't want to say that to the whole world, but there you go. <laughs> Interesting times in the commentary box as Taylor Spivey drops another couple of seconds to Zafira, who will just be keeping an eye on. And thanks to these turnarounds, you can always keep half an eye on your competitors and know exactly what the gaps are. There's three um, almost dead turns or turnarounds that where you can see where the rest of the field is and Katie Zafiris will see Taylor Spivey heading up to the top of that hill and from the other perspective Taylor Spivey sees Katie Zafiris rocketing away from yeah. it down the hill as she's still doing all the work so it's such that's a big always boost. tough to see such a big boost for Katie to have seen that she'll see every time she goes around one of these U-turns of which there's three each lap she'll be seeing that that gap is now going out for the first lap it didn't now every single metre really it seems that Katie's pulling a little bit further away so that's a big mental boost for Katie and just potentially a little bit demoralising for Taylor she's still got a big gap on those coming through in third, fourth, fifth and sixth so she really needs to keep the pressure on now to, to keep herself in that second position overall on those last time split it looks like Yuko and Kirsten are holding Katie Zafiris at 46 seconds. That's what they started behind. And uh, so they're actually moving slightly quicker than Taylor on the road. Yeah, they're working well together in this in this final round on the bike. Now that they've been forced to do that, the three of them, Kirsten, Casper, Rachel, Klammer, Yuko, Takahashi. Klammer currently in uh, fifth position overall and Casper in second position. So Casper will know that if she can finish in, second uh, in third position, she'll still maintain second uh, in championship standings, uh, obviously we don't add that up until the end of the weekend, but in terms of round points heading into championship points, she'll be in a, a decent spot. And Summer Cook, meanwhile, has to sit there and watch people add round points and, and just disappear from her in the distance. So Rachel Klammer knows that a third place here will make a big difference as opposed to fifth place in terms of to overtaking Summer Cook in the overall championship standings. So that's where the real battle is at this point between Casper, Klammer and Takahashi. Meanwhile, Taylor Spivey and Katie Zafiris are having rather lonely bike rides out the front, and Zafiris has put, just in that lap, another five seconds into Taylor Spivey, so she's truly showing her class, Katie Zafiris. Yeah, she's not hanging around, is she? She's not, she's not settling in and just thinking, oh, I'm leading this race now, and I'll save something for the final two legs on the, on the swim and the run. She's really extending that all the time. She looks comfortable. She does. I mean, she, she really does, doesn't she? She doesn't she? look like this is hurting her, and I'd like to ask her why. Well, she's concentrated. <laughs> I know she's been out here the last few days concentrating very hard on her gearing options, heading up and down these hills and just making sure that she gets up and down in the, the minimal amount of effort, and it certainly seems to be paying off that she's not only one of the strongest athletes, but also one of the most dedicated. Henry Schumann is like that in the men. He, he, he spends a lot of time out on course getting every corner right, getting all his gearings correct. And uh, and those little one percenters, if you like, go a long way uh, over the course of a season of such tough racing over multiple days. Well, without question, I saw her out here four days ago with Tommy Zafiris, her husband, and she was one of the only women that constantly rode this course. It was a lot wetter than what it was. She, she had a lot of input on how she wanted the corners to be put for us to setting up the course. And uh, I think she just lavishes in, in this front racing and uh, she's yet to show any sign of fatigue in any of the races we've done. She's just been so dominant and strong and I think the multi-day racing suits her strength as an athlete. 
Yeah, I think that's one of the things that you see in Super League. The athletes who are really strong and really conditioned do well over the two, three-day formats, whatever it is that we, we have on whatever weekend we're in at Super League. But yeah, the, the, the ability to back up, the ability to come back the next day and to not show fatigue from, from the get-go, that's really, really important. There's no point in being good on one day and not being able to show up on the second, and Katie's been brilliant at that. All right, Katie gets off the bike first, which means she'll just pick up a short shoot to add to her uh, happy spot at the front of this race and, and put a little bit more time into Spivey. Behind them, though, Joanna Brown has recovered somewhat from busting herself a little bit on the, um, on the second stage, and she's joined a group of now four in Casper, Klammer and Takahashi as well. And there is Taylor Spivey, who's really seen no one else except for the back of Katie Zafiris during this stage. But she'll head now into the water, looking to make up a little bit of time. She's wearing the blue jersey, in case you didn't pick that up earlier on, because she had the fastest swim split. So she's the uh, back in Malta. So she's the fastest swimmer out there, and she'll need to employ all of that with the short shoot for Zephyrus, seeing her into the water for the last time today. The water quite warm out there. It's just the wind when they get out of the water, which is really chilling the athletes to the bone. But as you can see, they've had eight different disciplines, the swim being the eighth. And there's one more to go after this. Spivey out onto the sand, has a look out, sees Zephyrus out there, picks a spot and dives in. And she'll need the swim of her life at this point if she's going to get anywhere near Zephyrus, who is already... Closing in on the first left-hand turn, and Jody Stimson has been eliminated by virtue of the 90-second rule. I don't think Taylor will be able to catch up to Katie in this, but I think she's done a, a really good job, actually. I think she held the, the gap quite well on that yep. final lap on the bike. It didn't seem like it, it went out anymore. I think she sort of has conserved her energy pretty pretty well there. She's still got a really decent buffer ahead of these girls that we're seeing going in in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place. And that's going to be the real battle here. The battle's going to be for the third place on the podium overall today. If you're Summer Cook right now, you're very, very focused on what's happening in this, in this third group. That's... Uh, that's going to play a lot of uh, a lot of impact on her okay, weekends no. racing and a lot of impact on the overall for her. A huge amount when you consider that Kirsten Casper is just ahead of her in the standings, well, 10 points ahead. So where Casper finishes, whether it be third or sixth, is going to make a big difference. And Clamour is two points behind Cook as well. So where she finishes in that group of yeah. four is going to make a big difference too. Jody Stimson will have to settle for seventh place overall. She's on 18 points, so she's behind Clamour. And Joanna Brown is another one of those who is up there in, in seventh spot in the championship standings and where she finishes in that group of four. And all of them will know exactly that. A big, big difference in terms of points when it comes to third versus sixth overall in the triple mix. But at the moment, with a hand on maximum points, one hand and probably three fingers of the other hand is Katie Zafiris, who has just done this day in, day out, week in, week out. Every time she dons the black and yellow of Super League, she seems to take it to a new level. The most impressive thing for me, and I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but the most impressive thing she's done today was recover from yeah. that bad start that she had. She would not have wanted that start at the beginning of the first stage of the triple mix on the swim. She wouldn't have wanted to find herself in that position at the beginning of the bike to have two laps really where she seemed to be dangling. She was yo-yoing off the back. She wasn't comfortable in the group. She wasn't anywhere near the front of the group. What she's done since then is really control the race. So she's not only managed to get herself back to where she wanted to go, she's done it calmly, she's done it in control, and now we're seeing her lead out by some distance. You know what? I think it's mostly your fault that Katie's a is so dominant in Super League racing. Do you know? Oh, well, I'll we, take a cut of her back, prize money then, yeah? <laughs> if we think back to the Gold Coast and, and you coming back on that run to steal <laughs> the world championship Steal's from her. Steal's a really her. nasty word. Yeah, six I think, weeks ago. She know. says robbed. Yeah, robbed. Gosh, robbed. harsh. No, she doesn't. Katie says Katie no. forced me to be really good that day, and I, I feel like that was probably my best performance in years, and I really had to pull that out because Katie was so good. She put in a really strong tactical performance. She tried something a bit different that she'd not done in other races and I didn't really have any choice but to uh, absolutely give my best performance and I, I really like Katie I think we, we alluded to her earlier she's such a meticulous athlete she's someone who's so dedicated she, she takes so much attention to all you know dotting the I's crossing the T's she's out on the course days in advance she's really a consummate professional and it almost felt a bit wrong to, to sort of take it from her at the end there but, didn't look but not so sad about it though not you? so you wrong that I was it. not going to do it <laughs> alright Takahashi the first of that group of four out of the water ahead of Casper 
There is Rachel Clamour as well. And Summer Cook would be happy with this racing right now. If she can put Takahashi there in third position, that would save the, the points lost to the, to the big points that go to the third position. So. Yeah, but I think she'll know that going out onto the run, Kirsten is only just behind yeah. Yuko Takahashi there, and it's all to play for on that final run. It's so hard to know who's going to pull up well out of this. They're, they're you know, on the eighth of nine stages of the day now. They've, they've done a lot of racing. But on paper, I think you'd probably have to say that Ooh, Kirsten is yeah, a better sure. runner. And she is in the red jersey, which shows that she's done it before. All right, a couple of run laps to go between... Katie Zafiris and a triple mix win. We kept saying it, but she didn't manage to win the triple mix in Jersey, and that's the last time she has been beaten in Super League. We had another day in Jersey and then a whole round in Malta, and no one could do the job on Katie Zafiris, and she is about to get that one that got away and pick up a triple mix win, barring some kind of mishap or an absolute jet run from Taylor Spivey as, again, out of the water comes... Katie Zafiris, your championship leader. That's why she's wearing the pink swimmers at the moment. She'll and also take, take the short shoot as well. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to... Just to, yeah, to, to add insult to injury to everyone Maybe else. Maybe we should make it that the short, everyone gets the short shoot except for the leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at this point. If you're too far in front, you can't have the yes. short shoot. Because <laughs> yeah. it gets boring. <laughs> well, well, we get to nominate whether she can take oh, it. Yeah. That would be better. Yeah. We'll just get a direct line yes. down to the race director and say, no. give it to Spivey <laughs> or hold Zafiris for 10 seconds. But because the dominance of Katie Zafiris is making the racing a little bit of a procession. But the, the battles are certainly going on back in the field as Taylor Spivey comes up the steps for the last time and onto the run. The factor we haven't talked about, and it's only in this final leg that it comes into play, is that they're going to have really sandy feet right now. Normally, you come off... <laughs> I mean, That's an athlete's response to this. <laughs> I'd, I'd be worried about getting blisters and sore feet, and more so just because they've got to race again tomorrow. Yes. Admittedly, it's only a short run, but it is uphill and downhill. Normally, when you come off a beach run in from the swim you then get on the bike so you know you lose some of that sand it brushes off and then you come onto the bike half an hour or an hour later depending on whether it's a sprint or olympic distance event in this event you come straight off the beach you put your shoes on and then you go out on the run so i can't imagine it's that comfortable well that's it that's what super league provides free, free foot scrubs as well <laughs> get rid of the dead skin yeah yep we have nice. brad beer up there with physio foot scrubs everything bunch of everything it's all, all inclusive package on. here so yeah. pop your feet uh, pop your shoes off after this Brand and new feet underneath all the skin gone but uh, it's all part of being a triathlete it's all part of super league triathlon as katie zafiris powers up church hill for the second last time We're and seeing you can kirsten, see in the background yeah. there kirsten casper pushing along knowing how important that one is for her amongst that group of four which is starting to spread out as well but taylor spivey through that transition was 28 seconds back which just shows you that even though Katie Zafiris is measuring her effort, she's continually putting time into Taylor Spivey as this one plays out, which just shows you with her frame, her endurance and her age, she can just keep on going. Yeah, if I was Katie right now, though, I'd be very, very much measuring my effort. Yeah, agree. She's got a whole day to come tomorrow. I, it's so hard to see her being beaten again, but I just think that she should now just control that, measure that effort. She's got the short shoot as well, 28 seconds plus a short shoot. Just relax. Relax your way. Get through as easy as possible. Save yourself for tomorrow. I honestly can't tell whether she's relaxing or not because she looks exactly the same. <laughs> like if we put her through 26 legs at the end of it, she would just be running her. with exactly the same yeah. thing. Well, we will. Yeah. We will next how year. Many, how many legs to get Zafiras to fatigue? I don't know. I would say that uh, <laughs> centipedes have more, less <laughs> legs than what we would have to do to get her through that and to make a break because she just seems to keep on going. But I think it's her running style from the very first stage. I think it's a valid point because if we if we have seen any kinks in Katie's armour, it's been her day two racing. It wasn't so much the case in Jersey, but I think last week in Malta she was so dominant. In, in the opening race of the of the round, and uh, she nearly got beaten in the in the second race on the second day when the, the other women who were well put out of the race in day one uh, really came back into play. So she's in a really good position here to, to as we said, just relax. Yeah. Don't do more than she has to do at this point. There's no there's no extra glory for being further seconds in front. She just needs to get to the finish line first and be as relaxed as possible because it was a really tight race in Malta. It was a thrilling race, actually, yeah. that sprint finish up the hill. Um, it showed what it meant at the end as well. She had that real grimace on her face that you don't often see with Katie, but she really put everything into that. 
So for this one, conserve your energy. She doesn't have to be in that battle, which is a massive advantage going into the final day. And full credit to Taylor Spivey. She came in at Malta. She missed us in Jersey. She wasn't able to race and uh, came into the Malta event. She won that opening TT. She really played a part in the racing. And here's the, here's the important race for the podium for today's racing. Yeah, Kirsten looks comfortable in yeah. third now. She's put up quite a nice gap between herself and the chasers. So that does look like it's going to be the finishing order of the day. And Kirsten's had a real yo-yo of a day, really, hasn't she? That first leg, she was right up there. Then the break happened and she didn't quite make it. Lost 35 seconds. Put herself back in the mix with a great run at the start of the second stage. Then got dropped on the bike again. Brought back into wow. it. Yeah, a real yo-yo. Of the day. Speaking of a yo-yo of the day, Brown. Joanna Brown, who can count herself incredibly, she should be happy for finishing in sixth position, the 2018 Commonwealth Games bronze medalist. The pace is very, very hot, and we have five women left in this race. Katy Zafiris will cross the line very soon. She'll have one more time up the hill, and that will be it. And very importantly, Kirsten Kasper sits in third and Rachel Klammer needs to take Yuko Takahashi and move herself into fourth position in terms of round points and subsequently championship points because she wants to find a way. And there you can see her working behind Takahashi as they go up Church Hill for the last time. She needs to take Takahashi and move herself into at least fourth position if she can't get Kasper. Yeah, Takahashi, the only non-coloured suit, if you like, that we've yeah. got left in the day. And I think she's actually been really impressive, especially in leg one. I think she looked after herself very well. We saw her at the front of the bike or near the front of the bike the whole time, tucked herself well into the group on the run. She kept herself as much in the game as she could do on the second leg. And to be able to complete this, given that we're only going to have five finishers amongst the other four who are all wearing coloured jerseys, yes. I think she's done a really, really good job today. Now battling it out with Rachel Klammer to hopefully for her finish in fourth place if you're wondering why Takahashi doesn't figure in that talks about championship standing she wasn't in Jersey. Jersey so that hurts her in terms of overall but she can certainly take a lot out of the others but it doesn't matter for Katie Zafiris who high fives away to a win in the triple mix Katie Zafiris what an effort from her a measured performance and she just did not slow down a hug there from Claire Michelle the Belgian Olympian who unfortunately was injured for this race, but Katie Zafiris was just too strong and ended up, she'll end up winning by a clear 45 seconds or more from Taylor Spivey and she has stamped her authority on this weekend as she has done every time in the past and she's still got enough oxygen left in the lungs to have a discussion about it. But Taylor Spivey, who arrived with us in Malta, made a big, big splash there. She's had a great, great season, the American, and she knows that she's done incredibly well here as well to pick up second behind Zafira. So an American 1-2 here in Majorca in the women's triple mix. Kirsten Casper, I think, <laughs> will be in third position overall. And there she is, Kirsten Casper, who found enough to kick away from her competitors. And I think in the background, Rachel Klammer has indeed taken Yuko Takahashi so Casper your second in your stamping tip standings will take third today fourth today with a little stumble over the line she's given it absolutely everything Rachel Klammer ahead of Yuko Takahashi but that look on Rachel Klammer's face she knew she had to give 110 percent and it looks like she's done exactly that what a course aren't they you can see it <laughs> I was just watching them, they're stumbling over the yeah, finish line. Yeah, they haven't got even the legs to get yeah. across the line anymore. It's taken so much out of them. It has, and we do it all again tomorrow as well. So for the women, it's about trying to back up, trying to recover. And at, at the Rafa Nadal Canopy, there's every single thing that'll, that, that can help them to recover, and they'll need all of that. And for the men, it's about looking at this race and, and trying to decide how they're going to take it on because it's only about... 40 minutes or so until the men's race and we can't wait to bring you that but we're all in awe here in the commentary box of Katie Zafiris who just cannot find a way to be beaten she always as you say we always say she measures her efforts she doesn't look like she's blowing at any point and she got around stage three in 21 minutes and five seconds and I can tell you that is a superhuman feat 42 seconds back to Taylor Spivey Kirsten Casper came back in the end in third Rachel Klammer, who gave everything a minute 12 back. <laughs>